if you enjoy Strange Podcast and would like to show your support, please consider making a donation. Donations will help to develop Strange Podcast and ensure more episodes in the future. All donations go towards the production and distribution fees associated with producing our episodes. These fees include things like web hosting, audio hosting, website plugins and software, and studio hardware. You can make a donation of any size by visiting the donation page at strangepodcast.com. All donations are very gratefully received, no matter how big or small. Thank you for your support. Welcome to Strange. Revealing strange stories of the paranormal, bizarre coincidence, and unexplained phenomena. You can find out more about Strange Podcast and connect with us on Facebook and Twitter by visiting strangepodcast.com. I'm Chris Batchelor. Thank you for listening. This is episode 7, which has been inspired by strange events happening near to where I live and where I record Strange Podcast. I'm based in Plymouth in the UK, a historic seaside city with an abundance of maritime and military history. Just less than 20 miles away is Dartmoor, a large and expansive national park. This huge, imposing landscape also has a wealth of history and legend with evidence of human civilization dating back thousands of years. Located between Plymouth and Dartmoor, just on the edge of the National Park, is Dartmoor Zoo. This popular tourist attraction has hit the headlines in recent weeks. A rare lynx, a type of wild cat, has mysteriously disappeared from its enclosure and managed to avoid capture for three weeks. But is this wild cat the only non-native beast to be roaming the moors? In this episode, we investigate the countless claims that big cats have for years roamed the British countryside, devouring livestock and scaring visitors. Firstly, a huge thank you to everybody who's taken the time to find us on Facebook, on Twitter and at strangepodcast.com. We're receiving some lovely emails and here's just a few. Aaron from Phoenix, Arizona has been in touch. Have you ever thought about a podcast on the Phoenix Lights? Just an idea. Love the show. Thanks. Well, thank you, Aaron, for getting in touch. I was really excited to get an email from Phoenix, Arizona. And of course, uh, the Phoenix Lights probably the most famous mass UFO sighting of all time. And yes, we've got plans uh, in the future to dedicate an episode to that really bizarre happening that night uh, in Phoenix, Arizona. So yes, uh, listen out for that coming soon. If you'd like to get in touch with episode suggestions, strange news that you've discovered, or maybe to tell us about your own strange experience, then details of how to contact us are coming up very soon. Steve from London here in the UK sent a message. Hi, Chris. Here's a real strange story of coincidence. Or is there something else going on? He's referring to uh, a story here in the UK uh, from Wells in particular uh, that made our headlines just a couple of weeks ago. It's about a family syndicate who have won £61 million as a lottery jackpot after buying a ticket because they felt like the luckiest people on the planet. This is after one of them had life-saving cancer surgery. Uh, Sonia Davies, who's 53, called her daughter Stephanie to urge her to buy the ticket two days after undergoing surgery in Florida to remove a tumour on her thyroid gland, having been told by doctors that the surgery had saved her life. She felt she was on a winning streak. Uh, She told the press conference uh, who were reporting this uh, fantastic event, 
I felt like I'd cheated death. You just think, OK, we'll buy a lottery ticket because I feel so lucky. And that's, of course, what they did. And they ended up winning £61 million, uh, which is fantastic for them. And Edward in Belgium's been on. Thanks for your email, Edward. Uh, great to hear from Belgium too. Edward sent me a link to a story all about NASA's plans to shut down the ISS, the International Space Station's live feed. There have been claims for years now that when uh, UFO sightings or similar unexplained events happen involving the ISS, the International Space Station, NASA cut the live feed. So conspiracy theorists now are claiming something big is going on in space. Get in contact with Strange Podcast, and it could be you featured in a future episode. We're looking for interesting stories and accounts of strange happenings from our listeners. Maybe you've witnessed an apparition, been involved in an inexplicable event, or have a story to tell that can't be explained away by just coincidence. If you'd like to contribute to a future episode, please head to the contact page at strangepodcast.com. On the 6th of July 2016, Flavio vanished after chewing his way out of his wooden house within hours of arriving at Dartmoor Zoo. Flavio is a rare lynx, a type of wild cat. Not a real threat to humans, but rabbits and other wildlife would certainly be wise not to get too close. Having grown up in and around Dartmoor in the 1980s, I can recount countless tales of the beast that roams the moor. Many blurry photos and shaky camcorder footage would regularly appear in our local press, claiming that the beast of Dartmoor had been spotted. And from time to time, a carcass of a rabid sheep or a cow would be discovered, only adding to the legend. It was claimed that the Dartmoor beast was a large cat maybe a puma or a panther or something similar. These animals are certainly not indigenous to the British countryside. So how could they possibly have got there? Is there any truth behind the questionable evidence? Or are the legends of the Dartmoor beast, the beast of Bodmin and other British big cat sightings just rumor and mischief by pranksters? In 1976, the Dangerous Wild Animals Act was introduced in the UK. This act was originally created to deal with the increasing fashion in the late 1960s and early 70s of people keeping interesting pets, which were often from the more dangerous species, as well as hybrids between wild and domestic species, such as wolf dogs and Bengal cats. It was increasingly seen as unacceptable in regard to public safety for the average citizen to be able to acquire a potentially dangerous animal without some form of regulatory control. The Act's purpose was to ensure that when private individuals kept dangerous wild animals, they do so in circumstances which do not create risk to the public and safeguard the welfare of the animals. The Act's purpose was to ensure that, when private individuals kept dangerous wild animals, they do so in circumstances which do not create risk to the public and to safeguard the welfare of the animals. It's thought that some of the more irresponsible wild and big cat owners release their animals into the British countryside to avoid prosecution. There have been sightings before the 1960s, though. In fact, a Canadian lynx shot in Devon in 1903 is now in the collection of the Bristol Museum. Analysis of its teeth suggest that prior to its death, it had spent a significant amount of time in captivity. There have been many mysterious big cat sightings across the UK, some as recent as July 2016. Here are some of the most famous. In 1988, the Ministry of Agriculture took the unusual step of sending in the Royal Marines to carry out a massive search for the rumoured beast of Exmoor, 
after an increase in the number of mysteriously killed livestock and farmer complaints over a subsequent loss of money. Several marines claimed to have seen the cat fleetingly, but nothing other than a fox was ever found. The Department of Environment, Food and Rural Affairs has published a list of predatory cats that they know have escaped in the United Kingdom, although most of these have been recaptured. In 1980, a puma was captured in Inverness, Scotland. The capture followed several years of sightings in the area of a big cat matching the description of the one that was captured, which had led local farmer Ted Noble to erect a cage trap. The puma was subsequently put into the Highland Wildlife Park Zoo and given the name Felicity. When it died, it was stuffed and was placed in the Inverness Museum. Zoo director Eddie Orbell concluded that the animal had been domesticated and might not have been released for long, noting that it enjoyed being tickled. In 1991, an Eurasian lynx was shot near Norwich in Norfolk. It had killed around 15 sheep within two weeks. The story was only reported in 2003, and the stuffed body of the lynx is allegedly now in the possession of a collector. For many years, this incident was considered to be a hoax, particularly by the hunting community. But in March 2006, a police report confirmed that the case was in fact true. It was probably an escapee from the facility in the area that bred animals, including Eurasian lynxes. Whilst researching and recording this episode, claims that three pumas were released into the wilds of Dartmoor in the 1970s have come to light. Although unconfirmed, it's thought that during the relocation of five pumas from a zoo closing in Plymouth to their new home at Dartmoor Zoo, three pumas managed to escape, as two were only received by the staff waiting at Dartmoor Zoo. Benjamin Mee, the current owner of Dartmoor Zoo, told The Telegraph in a published article when he bought the zoo for £1 million in 2006, he was informed that a pack of pumas had allegedly been released into the wild in the late 1970s or early 80s. He said, There were lots of rumours and many different stories about how they got out. Some say they were released from the old zoo, either by mistake or on purpose. We just don't know. While some others say they were being transported here at the time from the zoo in Plymouth. I've no knowledge of the circumstances about how it happened, but at the time there were three pumas that should have been here at Dartmoor Zoo that were not. One of the most recent reports was that of a lion roaming around Essex during the summer of 2012. Initially sighted from a caravan park, there were also reports of a lion heard roaring in the local area. A photograph was taken by one witness. Police advised local residents to stay indoors and a search was made of the local area, but nothing was found. Local zoos and visiting circuses were contacted, but no one reported an escaped lion. A Miss Murphy later claimed the photograph taken was that of her pet Maine Coon cat, Teddy. In 2013, in a small village on the Shropshire Wrexham border, Two sisters reported seeing a large black cat-like creature with a three-foot stride jumping a fence and disappearing into a neighbouring field. On returning in the day, they discovered a large lair and paw prints too big to belong to a domesticated cat. A one-time zookeeper at Chester Zoo and Dudley Zoo, Mr Larkham, agrees the paw prints do not belong to a domesticated cat, but are too small to be those of a panther. He believed it could be the descendant of the Shropshire jungle cat from the 1980s, a gigantic domesticated cat. There have even been big cat sightings in the last couple of weeks whilst recording this episode. Police have carried out a search for a female lion after a lorry driver said one jumped out at him in front of his vehicle. The big cat was spotted near clay pits in the St. Austell area in Cornwall on July the 14th. The stunned driver had seen a big cat with black markings on its face of a thorny colour and a dark tail. When the police arrived at the scene, they found mysterious white paw prints where the creature 
had crossed the road. It would appear what once was a childhood legend and myth, for me, actually may bear some truth. Big or wild cats, such as lynx and pumas, may really be roaming the rural areas of Britain. If you'd like to find out more and view some scientific research and evidence, I can recommend visiting the British Big Cat Society website, britishbigcats.org. As for Flaviu, the rare lynx that escaped from Dartmoor Zoo, I'm happy to report he's been found safe and sound and returned to the zoo, where no doubt he'll be the main attraction for some time to come. If you'd like to make a comment, on what you've heard in this episode, you can on the episode page at strangepodcast.com. There you'll also find interesting links to the resources and evidence featured in this episode. And don't forget, you can also follow us on Facebook and Twitter by going to strangepodcast.com. Until next time, thank you for listening. Thank you.